Hello everybody, Jim here. Welcome back. I just returned from yet another epic retro game hunting trip. Today I went back out to West Tokyo, way out to the neighborhood of Hamura, which used to be like my number one hunting ground back in the day. Uh, hard off and hobby off, always fully stocked with stuff, but unbeknownst to me, a new hard off had opened in that area and I'd never been there before. Uh, so that's what I did today. As soon as I found out about the place, I jumped on the train, headed way out west to do some game hunting, and I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, they had some very cool consoles and games to dig through. Uh, so I was very happy, a very fruitful game hunting trip today. So you'll see all of that in the video and come back at the end of the video. We're going to take a look at what my best finds of the day were. But first, as crazy as this might sound, we actually have a sponsor. So take it away, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody. Jim here. And I've got a little bit of a dilemma for you. Have you ever been browsing some of the really cool online shopping sites here in Japan, you know, stuff like Amazon Japan, Mercari, or Rakuten, drooling over all the cool stuff they have available only to lament the fact that they don't do international shipping? Well, that's what Baiyi is here for. They're making it possible for people all over the world to get exactly what they want from Japan whenever they want it. Baiyi is a website that brings together all of the best online shopping and auction sites Japan has to offer into a single location. By browsing this website, you can buy pretty much anything you want from Japan, be that games, trading cards, figures, clothes and apparel. If it's listed on any Japanese shopping site, you can find it on Baiyi. With that much stuff, you'd think it would be really difficult to find exactly what you want, but it's actually pretty easy. For example, I went to the sidebar, selected anime figures and goods, and then typed in Ghost in the Shell, and boom, I had an almost unlimited supply of Ghost in the Shell figures at my fingertips, and I did the same thing with other properties like Rockman, Zelda, and Persona. All you have to do is pick out all the stuff you want, load it into your cart, and then go through checkout, and let Baiyi take care of the rest. They will purchase the items for you, have them shipped to their warehouse here in Tokyo where they do some final preparations and then forward it on to you. It couldn't be easier or more convenient and lucky us, Baiyi has provided me with a registration code. That's right, when using the link under the description of this video, you can register to Baiyi and get 2,000 yen off your first purchase. That's 2,000 yen of free money, and that's something everyone can enjoy. So don't waste any more time. Register to buy E and then start buying up all of the stuff from Japan you've ever wanted. It's pretty damn cool. And with that being said, back to the show. Hello everybody, Jim here, uh, coming to you on this bright, beautiful, sunny day here in uh, West Tokyo. Uh, today I'm actually back in the neighborhood of Hamura. Uh, you might remember last time I was here, uh, it was like last month, and I was going to a uh, hard off that I used to go to all the time, kind of like my old standby hard off. And uh, it was pretty great, found a lot of games, had a good time, successful game hunt, but unbeknownst to me, in recent years, a whole new hard off has opened up uh, not too far from where the other one was actually. That's about one kilometer from the station. And it's, uh, as far as I know, brand new. I've never been there before, uh, but I checked Google Maps. It looks good, looks like it should be a nice fully stocked hard off. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. We're out in Hamura, West Tokyo. We're about to take a nice leisurely stroll to this hard off. Again, 
one kilometer so not far at all and then when we get there we're going to be digging through a big pile of retro games and consoles and it's going to be awesome and that's what's coming up next Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I can see from afar uh, we are coming up on the hard off now. Just look for the blue and yellow that signifies the home, the home of the hards and the offs. It'll never, I, I think it'll never not be funny. Uh, hard off. Kind of an unfortunate naming, but a funny one. And, uh, Whatever, it's a little scenery here, dirt patch. We don't get a lot of dirt patches out in Tokyo where I'm from. Um, so, all right. It's like a nice sort of warehouse version of a hard off. Again, my first time coming to this one. Reused though. So what do we got? We've got visual, we've got cameras. We've got car goods, computers, audio, music, etc., etc. Huh, I sure hope there are video games. This might be a waste of time, although maybe I could use some new power tools. I don't know what I'd use them for, but hey, why the hell not? So, hard off and a black and yellow version, pro and DIY. Hmm, whatever the hell that means. Uh, well, let's find out if they got what we're looking for. Oh, yes, up there. It says game. Right on the very corner. Cool. All right. Let's get in here. Get us some games. Here we go. And a lawnmower. And a wheelbarrow. And a cement mixer. <laughs> we're going to get retro games and cement mixers. It's going to be awesome. All right, getting started with some consoles and other various accessories. Uh, here they had some pretty cool stuff. For whatever reason, there was a Sonic Gems collection just sort of chilling there by itself. But we got Galaga, we got Neo Geo Mini, we got a PC Engine Core Graphics, and is that an SG-1000 down there? Yes, it is, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's something I really don't come across very often is a really old Sega stuff. Uh, here we got some PS2 Slims, 8,800, 17,600 for this one. That thing better be signed by someone really famous, like the Pope or something. Um, Super Famicom Mini, 7,700 and uh, 66 for that one. And some AV Famicoms, this one is complete. And it's 11,000 yen, so that's like $90. That's not cheap at all. And then 176 for a boxed one, and uh, I'll say this at least, the stuff in here was in really good condition. Um, as we're gonna look around, we're gonna see there's not as much stuff as like a giant hard off, like Hachi Oji or something like that. Um, but what was here was like really good looking, clean looking stuff. Uh, and then a Mario Paint, for whatever reason, for 1500 yen. And you get the game, box, mouse, all that good stuff. Not a big Mario Paint guy myself, but whatever. Uh, we got a boxed Model 1 Mega Drive. How much is it? Why don't we spin that bad boy around? Even though the box is a little dirty, but it's not too bad at all. Uh, 16.5. So that's like 140 bucks for Mega Drive. But again, three month warranties on those. A Model 2, my preferred model of Mega Drive, 74.80. So that's like 60 bucks maybe? Like 57, 58 bucks for that. Uh, not the worst prices I've ever seen, and a boxed, clean, very nice looking N64 for 7700 
It's like 60 bucks, and you can get a boxed in 64. That's not too bad either. We got a bunch of loose Super Famicoms and GameCubes, and the uh, the 3DO here, the Panasonic, the FZ, what is it, 10? The front loader, which is the one I had as a teen, and then the FZ100, I believe, the top loader, which I eventually picked up uh, while in Japan. So that's pretty cool. Uh, 3DO actually does have some pretty cool games available for it. Another Mega Drive Dreamcast. My beloved 7700. So it's like 60 bucks and you got yourself a Dreamcast there. This I thought was pretty cool. Sharp MZ1500. So there you go. One of those older uh, Japanese home computers that presumably was uh, had some games on it. And then a uh, what is it, Sega. Is that another? Oh, it's a Mark III. Okay, cool. 17.6 for this Mark III, and again, in very good condition. Uh, so there you go, some consoles in this hard off. Dance smoke. Akuo taoshi, save no machi o sukue. Hero ni kiss. Honkak shooting game. Dance smoke. Capcom. All right, now we get started with the games proper. And uh, we're gonna start with PS1, which uh, they didn't have a ton, but what they did have was pretty cool. Starting with the one and only Gunner's Heaven for 5,000 yen, really good game. Um, most people would say it's kind of like the PlayStation's answer to Gunstar Heroes, and it uh, is similar to that. It's a really fun, fast-paced, run-and-gun action extravaganza. We've got some Gambari Goimon here as well. Um, one thing that did kind of impress me, and we're going to especially see it when we get to the loose carts for like Famicom and Super Famicom. Um, this place, it wasn't the, the best stocked I'd ever been to, but man, the stuff was in pretty good condition, and some of the games we're looking at here um, they're, they're pretty reasonably priced, <laughs> especially, what does that say, uh, Carom uh, Shot, something like that, uh, uh, some Billiards, there you go, in case you want to play Billiards, um, or Kalik the Blood 2, I don't know what the hell that is, but it's 300 yen, so who can argue with 300 yen, um, that's like, I don't know, what, two dollars or something like that, uh, Muscle, Get your muscles going, your Kiniku, if you will, and some Crash Bandicoots as well. Again, for a couple of bucks a piece, 500 for Gran Turismo 2, and was it like 600 for Grandia Rave Groove Adventure for 300 yen. And uh, it's what are they raving about? They got some glow sticks and some uh, <laughs> some like candy necklaces and bracelets. Jumping Flash 300 yen classic. And uh, some RPG Maker as well, so that's pretty cool. And uh, just lots of stuff. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, uh, Civilization. This is pretty cool, though. Uh, the double shooting. So you get uh, Ray Storm and Ray Crisis in a single game, but uh, not really necessary anymore since you can get all three of the Ray's games on the uh, Switch. But that was 2,000 yen, which is, yeah, that's pretty good. It's like $15. Uh, so that was a good price on that. I was... Uh, Pretty happy with that. That's quite cool. And then 300 for some Tekken 3. Tekken 3, anything Tekken is always going to be super affordable. Uh, just because, you know, it's Tekken. It's great. It's so like hotcakes. 200 yen for Tekken 2. And 500 yen for Xenogears. Which is uh, awesome. And uh, 300 yen for Legend of Mana. So basically, if you're an RPG fan, I mean... Maybe take some classes, learn to read Japanese, because RPGs in Japan are as common as, like, Madden games in the United States. They're practically giving them away. They're a couple of bucks a piece. And, uh, and that ain't bad. Macross Digital Mission VFX, so a 3D Macross action game. Pretty cool, and also 300 yen, so that's literally like a couple of bucks. PlayStation games for like two bucks, two fifty, whatever the case may be. Uh, we've got some Vita and uh, other various things there. PSP, not too familiar with that, so I kind of bypassed that. Uh, actually, if you you're really interested in that stuff, you can let me know down in the comments. I'm more of a retro guy. 
Uh, but we're looking at these Super Famicom loose cards. We got Poyo Poyo and Super Donkey Kong and I think Battle Dodge. But all this, it's all 300 yen for these carts. So that's great. Like, I love going to a hard off where the the price is, they're, they're appropriate, they're proper. Like, I don't, I hate going to one and just seeing like 300 for this, 500 for that. But then this is like 1200, this is 15, this is, you know. Nah, come on. I mean, these games are uh, super common. We got our Dragon Ball Zs and Dragon Quests and Street Fighter 2s and Donkey Kongs and all that stuff. Give it to us for 300 yen, 500 yen here and there. Uh, or 800 yen for Muscle Bomber. Which is acceptable because that is uh, a more expensive Capcom game these days. And 1500 for East 4. Again, a less common Super Famicom game, so I can let it slide. But then we got Nazo Puyo 500. We got some Mickey Mouse. And Tetris Battle Gaiden for 1,000 yen. Star Ocean. Uh, some Yoshi's Cookie. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, so yeah, I had me I had myself a hell of a time. I had myself a hell of a time digging through these games. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Um, and uh, box games as well. Dragon Quest, Super Donkey Kong, Final Fight for 2,500 yen. But it is boxed. It is complete. The box is not perfect, as one might imagine. Uh, this game is something like, what, 34, 35 years old? So, you know, got a little wear and tear. Uh, the original Fatal Fury, the, uh, the Battle of Destiny, it's like 1,500 yen. It's like 12 bucks. And when a game is boxed and it's complete, can you really argue with like 12 bucks? And the original Act Razor, great game, 2,000 yen. Uh, it says there's a little damage to uh, the box and whatnot, but that's okay. 2,000 yen, that's a good deal. Fatal Fury Special, boxed, complete, and only 8 hundred yen and that's a fantastic deal a complete copy of fatal fury special 800 yen yes please and we got some yoshi's island again a bunch of these boxes were in pretty good condition too the loose cards were really clean and then these box games were uh, pretty sharp 1000 yen for one of the sailor moon uh, puzzle games i i kind of get mixed up because there's like three or four of the puzzle games two beat em ups and a fighting game. So Sailor Moon was just all over that Super Famicom. 500 for Super Mario Kart, so that ain't bad. And 500 as well for Super Poyo Poyo and Poyo Poyo 2 complete and in good condition. And it's only a thousand yen, about seven dollars and fifty cents. And apparently there's some military operations going on right now because there's an extremely annoying helicopter outside my window. Can't you wait until after I've made my YouTube videos before you start doing your damn helicopter flyovers? How inconsiderate. Uh, Star Fox 64, 800 yen. Boxed, complete. And again, in pretty sharp condition. Star Wars Episode One Racer. Everybody's favorite, obviously. 500 yen. Oh, Jake Lloyd. Everything turned out just great for you. What a happy ending. To a happy life. 500 yen for Dragon Ball. And that's good. And then again, these uh, loose Famicom carts, most of them you're going to see. Uh, the coloration on them is still really good. They were pretty clean. And again, pretty cheap stuff too. 300 yen for Yoshi. Uh, 300 yen for these Dragon Ball games. All real good. Real good. Yeah, super good. That's a good deal there, yeah. Uh, Zevius and some pro wrestling there, some Tecmo pro wrestling, so you know it's good. <laughs> as well as uh, some Goonies, some Hokuto no Ken, the original, mind you. Not the one that uh, later came out on the NES. 800 yen for uh, Mario USA. And just look at that card. Look at the condition. Look at it. Check it out. Oh, it's really nice. Super clean. It's really clean, bro. And these Rockman games, again, really impressed. 1500 for Rockman 3, pretty good deal. Rockman 5, my favorite, 1,000 yen. And again, the cart is super clean. And I like the Rockman 5 cart anyway. It's like an aquamarine color. Not a lot of Famicom carts with that coloration. In fact, I think that's the only one I can think of. 2,000 yen, complete copy of Super Mario Brothers 3. Which you could argue, ah, who needs that? You can play that on anything now. But that is pretty cool. It's a collector's piece, if nothing else. Get your Mario 3 on. I mean, it is one of the best games ever made, in my 
personal opinion, or at least one of the best like 8-bit games. Uh, some Golgo 13 box is really ratty actually, uh, but 1500 on that, it's kind of like ripped up a little bit. That is a cool game though, I do like that, you know, a game where you can like snipe someone and sleep with a, I don't know what what, what she was, but uh, anyway, uh, Dragon Ninja with a sweet Dragon Ninja sticker on it, uh, aka Bad Dudes. So what's a better title, Dragon Ninja or Bad Dudes, you tell me, but there's Star Soldier, there's some Makai Mora, aka, what is it, uh, Ghosts and Goblins? Can't argue with that. We got some N64 stuff here, uh, loose games, uh, along with the box games, and there's even some Game Boy, GBA, stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Some of the N64 Goimon games, those are nice. 500 yen for Diddy Kong Racing, the superior N64 Kart Racer. We've got some Bomberman, we've got some DK64, we've got Puzzle Bobble 64 for 1,000 yen. That's nice, that's another one I don't come across too much. And 1,000 yen, about $7.50 right now, that's a really good deal on that. And then Snowbow Kids, for 1,000 yen, that's really good. I usually... If I do come across a loose card of Snowball Kids, it's usually closer to 2,000 yen. Uh, so that was nice to find that. We've got this case down here, though, with some really sweet stuff in it. Including, what, Super Chinese X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, one of my favorite SNES games. Um, Gundam Wing Endless Duel. And then we got some Joe and Mac in there. We've got some Gogo -Go Akuman. Mickey 3. We got Rockman 2 complete and in great condition, but it's 30,800 yen. Oh my god. Everything I said about all the, um, you know, the games on the shelf being priced pretty well, it kind of went out the window with that game. But everything else in that case actually was pretty, priced pretty well. Gundam and X-Men and all that stuff. Uh, some loose Hue card here. Uh, some Game Boy games. Game Boy Color. We're about to come to, in like just a minute, we're going to come to the, um, the Saturn, Dreamcast, PC Engine stuff, and that's where we're gonna start to see things really cool off. It's getting harder and harder to find that stuff these days, but you can see these uh, Game Boy games. Good stuff, there's like Puyo Puyo, Mario, Kirby, all that good stuff, it's like 300 yen. Again, they're like a couple of bucks a piece. Kinda hard to argue with that. And we've got some Famicom disc, that's pretty cool. We got some baseball, some soccer. Not too terribly exciting, although there is ice hockey. Complete copies of Mario 2, Mario Golf, and this I thought was especially cool for 1800 yen. Uh, Doki Doki Panic, aka uh, the game that would eventually become Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I don't come across that so much. Uh, it's more common to come across uh, Mario USA, aka Mario 2. Uh, this kind of cool. We got like <laughs> Adventure Cobra on the PC, we got some other stuff, but as I say, we're looking at the Dreamcast and everything. They did not really have very much. Um, but this is really cool. 1,200 yen. And we've got ourselves some Puyo Puyon. And uh, I like that a lot. And what else we got here? Not too terribly much. Uh, the Dreamcast is pretty sparse. We got some good stuff on the Saturn, though. Uh, some Street Fighter Zero Two. Please, Jim, try not to knock some stuff over. Um, but that's pretty good. Great game. Great port of that game. It's 1,000 yen. Kind of hard to argue with that. Again, like $7.50. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a good deal. Uh, but down here, some of these Mega Drive games, I was especially happy to find uh, Shura no Mon, a.k.a. Shura's Gate. Sort of a weird little quasi-fighting strategy game, but uh, pretty cool. If nothing else, kind of graphically impressive. And Puyo Puyo, complete, in really good shape, for 500 yen. That's like... What, like three dollars and fifty cents for a complete Puyo Puyo? Yes, please. Got some AES here. Fatal Fury Special. These are six thousand yen though, uh, which is to be expected. Still, you know they're AES games. They shouldn't be that cheap. Four thousand for Samurai Spirits though. Pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about that. And then uh, a couple other things here for the Saturn Puzzle Bobble 2X. Great game. And, uh, yeah, not much on the Saturn, but what they did have, well, <laughs> I say that, they had, like, two good games, and the rest was kind of, you know, stuff I, you know, wasn't very excited to see. And then just a tiny little selection 
of PC Engine games. Kind of sad, you know, Saturn, Dreamcast, Sega, and PC Engine stuff is much more collectible, I guess. And uh, less common than Nintendo stuff and PlayStation, but uh, still, I just, you know, if I can find it, I'm a happy camper. Um, but that's really going to do it uh, for the games here. Let's get out of here. Let's go home and uh, let's do some finds of the day. Alright. Hey, that was uh, not bad. Uh, they had more than cement mixers after all. Uh, so they had uh, quite a few games to choose from and uh, picked up quite a lot. Actually filled up my backpack and had enough left over for a little small bag on the side. Uh, so pretty cool. They didn't have much in the way of like Sega Saturn, PC Engine, Dreamcast. Uh, that's kind of typical at Hard Offs these days. Uh, but they had plenty of Super Famicom, Famicom N64. The carts were super clean. Uh, it was actually pretty surprising that the carts were as clean as they were and uh, as cheap as they were. Most of them were like 300 yen, 500 yen. Uh, so I got some good stuff. We're going to go home and check out my finds of the day. But first, there's a Tex-Mex place near here and I'm getting hungry. Uh, so I'm going to go eat me a burrito and then we'll be at home a little later and we'll take a look at my finds of the day from this awesome new hard off uh, here in Hamura. So stick around because that's coming up next. Post burrito pickups. Okay, and we are back. Just got home uh, from an awesome game hunting trip. As you saw, they had some games, consoles, plenty of stuff to choose from. Prices not bad either. And it was a beautiful, beautiful, warm, sunny day today. And uh, it was just pretty cool going back to Hamura, which I had just went back last month. Uh, I try to make it a point to get out there at least once a year and to find that there was another heart off there that I hadn't been to yet, uh, that was just a really cool revelation. So now, on my annual trips to Hamura, uh, I'll not only be going to a hobby off and one heart off, I'll be going to a hobby off and two heart offs. Honestly, I should probably start giving tours of the area uh, with uh, as much time as I, I like to spend around there. Uh, these last handful of videos has been all West Tokyo. It's been uh, Hamura and Tachikawa and Hachioji and Hajima. All of those places are out kind of in the same general area. Uh, so yeah, maybe something in the future I can start giving people like retro game hunting tours of West Tokyo or whatever. That would be cool. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a whole bunch of games today. Uh, I think I picked up about 50 games and spent in the neighborhood of about like 45,000 yen, uh, which for 50 games, uh, that's not bad at all, considering most of them were really cheap. I picked up a lot of loose cars today. Uh, a lot of it was like 300 yen, 500 yen. I uh, picked up some PlayStation games as well. Um, so yeah, I think for everything I got today, price was uh, definitely uh, reasonable. And uh, I got finds of the day here. These are four games that I picked up. Um, that I think for the the price that I picked them up at, for what they are, these are definitely like uh, the top picks of the day. And first up, uh, I picked this up for 500 yen. Typically, no matter what it is, if you find a complete Mega Drive game for 500 yen, you pick it up. Because I think right now that's like $3.50, which is just like a ridiculous deal. But I got a copy of the original Puyo Puyo. And uh, I, I talk a lot about Puyo Puyo games on this channel. It's not like by design or anything. It's just as I'm doing my game hunting, uh, I find stuff that's, that I like, that I know are good games. And also you know, games that I know if I send to someone, they're gonna be, play, be able to play it really easily without much of a language barrier and they're gonna have fun with it. So Puyo Puyo games and puzzle games in general really uh, fit the bill in those terms. Um, but this, the original Puyo Puyo, it doesn't have any like really crazy gimmicks like later games would have, like Puyo Puyo Sun and, and uh, Puyo Puyo On. Those had like really cool twists on the gameplay here. Just straightforward Puyo Puyo, match up the different little Puyos of various color, 
create combos, and then send a whole bunch of junk Poyos over to the opponent's side of the screen. It's a lot of fun, super addictive, very simple, easy to pick up and play. Uh, nice visuals, great sound design as well. In fact, this is the game that was converted into Dr. Robotic, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, excuse me. When's the last time I said Dr. Robotnik? <laughs> Robotnik! Uh, Robotnik, he's a cousin of Robotnik. But uh, this was uh, turned into Mean Bean Machine, but whatever the case may be, uh, super fun game, again with great visuals, uh, great sound design by Compile, so you know it's gonna be good. And uh, again, for 500 yen, this was like a no-brainer. It's complete, it's in great condition, and uh, again, 500 yen, like 370, $3.50, I'm getting all my uh, currencies mixed up, but like, I would expect to pay this much for like a loose cart, not, you know, a complete game, so that was awesome. Uh, speaking of complete games for the Super Famicom for 800 yen, so this was probably about six bucks with the exchange rate, I got a complete copy of Fatal Fury Special for the Super Famicom. And while, you know, it's not uh, really up to snuff compared to like the Neo Geo version or something like that, um, this is still a pretty good port of this game, handled by Takata. Um, so, you know, they didn't do uh, such a bad job, but it's Fatal Fury Special, so it's always going to be awesome. It says on the back, 32 meg action game. Uh, so, all right, 32 megs, there you go. But great game. This was actually the first Fatal Fury game I ever played. Uh, at a sleepover at a friend's house, we watched Fatal Fury the motion picture, and then we played Fatal Fury Special on his SNES. I guess the guy was just a big Fatal Fury fan, what, what can I say? I think we were 10 years old at the time. Um, but that was my first time playing any Fatal Fury game at all. I immediately loved it because I was a 2D fighter fan at the time. So in particular, I loved Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Killer Instinct. So to find another really good 2D fighter with some really cool characters and things, um, I was really happy about that. I became an instant Fatal Fury fan. And then this game is, is awesome. Um, maybe my favorite Fatal Fury game ever, like between this and uh, Mark of the Wolves. But this is just, uh, you know, the game, it combines all of the great classic Fatal Fury characters all into one game, and it's a lot of fun. Nice graphics and sound as well for the SNES. Again, not exactly the Neo Geo version, but an admirable port nevertheless. It is Fatal Fury Special. And again, for 800 yen for a complete copy that's in pretty good shape, not bad at all. I won't complain about that. Speaking of Super Famicom games, I actually had to go into the case to get this one, but I was really happy to do it because uh, a lot cheaper than I usually find it for. They actually took the price sticker off of it on checkout, but I think it was in the neighborhood of like 18 bucks, 17 or 18 bucks, which is like kind of a steal for this game. Uh, it's Gundam Wing Endless Duel. Uh, this by Natsume, and uh, if you've never played it, it is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game featuring all of the mechs from Gundam Wing, and that alone should make it uh, pretty enticing for uh, SNES fans and Super Famicom fans, but on top of that, it is a really competently made fighting game. It's really good. Uh, Natsume was a great developer back in the day. Uh, I think aside from this, another notable fighting game they made back then was, I think it was like... Power Rangers the fighting edition or Power Rangers the movie or something like that um, But they made some pretty cool Power Rangers games back in the day, too And this is kind of similar to that instead of fighting with Zords you're fighting with Gundams But a uh, great game again pretty damn good playing 2d fighter in fact one of the better 2d fighters on the Super Famicom and SNES uh, and the graphics uh, Like no kidding. These are some of the best visuals on the console Period. Huge character sprites that look really good. They're very detailed. And all the backgrounds look really good too. And the soundtrack is excellent. Just no surprise, it's Natsume. Um, so just all around, this game is amazing. Gundam Wing, Endless, Duel, and uh, this cart. Super, super clean. Uh, so yeah, for the price and everything, just... It was a must-buy. I don't see this game for that cheap, like, ever. Uh, and the last game I picked up, nothing too particularly rare, but it was... 
uh, a good price on it. Actually, probably about half of what I normally see it going for. It was a thousand yen today, so about seven dollars and fifty cents. Usually, it's closer to like two thousand yen. But I picked up a copy of Snowbo Kids for the N64, and uh, this game, otherwise known as Snowboard Kids, I don't know why. Japan just loves to be different, so it's Snowbo Kids here. Uh, developed and published by Atlas, so you know, there's a mark of quality on it. Um, but I love this game because it's sort of disguised as a snowboarding game. It, on the surface, that's what it is. And I like snowboarding games. I was a fan of Cool Borders back in the day, and SSX after that, so pretty cool. Um, this is not really like a snowboarding game in the traditional sense, though. It's really a kart racer, dis dis disguised as a snowboarding game, and I like that a lot because I'm a huge kart racing fan, especially in 64. I mean, you've got uh, Mario Kart 64, obviously, you've got Donkey Kong Racing, you've got a lot of other really great uh, racing games on the console, and Snowbo Kids is one of the unsung heroes of the kart racing genre, because again, it really is a kart racer. You uh, go downhill on your snowboards, and you pick up items, and you attack the other players and everything, and that's all a lot of fun. It's really just like a game of Mario Kart or, or Crash Team Racing or something to that effect, except you're going downhill on a snowboard with all these cute little characters. Um, nice visuals, great soundtrack. The only annoying thing is, is like mid-race, you come up to the... Um, what is it, the ski lift thing? And like, if you're coming up to it and someone else is getting onto it, you like bump into them, and that can like really screw you up and like knock you out of place. But other than that little annoyance, um, this is an absolutely great game. Super fun, nice graphics, very cute uh, designs, and a good soundtrack. All around just a solid effort from Atlas. And I was happy to find it today for very little money. It's Snowbo Kids! On the N64. Would you like to be a snowbo kid? I, I bet you would. We all wanted to be a snowbo kid. I don't know. I'm rambling. Anyway, there you go. Uh, so that's it. Those were my finds of the day. But like I said, I picked up like almost 50 games today or something. Uh, a lot of really inexpensive stuff. So uh, I had a lot of fun getting back on the train, heading out to Hamuro, back where it all began, and discovering a brand new heart off today. So that was a lot of fun. So thanks for watching, everyone. I uh, should have put in this video the promo for Bai-E, so thank you Bai-E for uh, sponsoring the video. Uh, do go check that out. Uh, the thing I did earlier was kind of a little on the scripted side, um, but it actually is a really cool website for people who like to, uh, uh, they want to shop for stuff in Japan, but um, they, you know, there's no international shipping from like Mercari and Rakuten and stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you to them as well. Uh, so anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these games. And if you're coming to Japan, are you intending to do any retro game hunting? I'd certainly like to know. And until next time, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you then. Goodbye.